start turning in the video. Oh, that makes it much easier. That's good. Magnify, you can go zoom, zoom, or out. And then you want to go down. I like that. That's a good view of everything back there. What's up everybody, Rob Ferretti, and as the coronavirus panic is spreading across the globe, I'm picking up my Corvettes. Uh, I've got two C8s that I'm picking up today, and mainly because some of the dealers are shutting down. The one at Whitmire Chevrolet in, in uh, Hershey, or near Hershey, Pennsylvania, the dealership is mandated to close at four o'clock. So I had to send a truck there while I flew here to Maddox Chevrolet in Detroit to drive the one back. So my plans changed a little bit, but I hear it. This is, uh, let's just consider this my first one because I have this in my hands first. But here is my first C8. This is the orange. It's funny because I forgot the colors I ordered because I ordered, I think I got four of them coming. But you've got the orange with the black wheels just to make it look a little bit more exotic and then the other one in Pennsylvania is white but this is a, this is a proper looking car now I'll do a full walkthrough on this later I've got a nine and a half hour drive ahead of me but I want to thank the guy thanks to the guys here at Matic for making this happen um, this is where John Hennessy uh, little Lou Gelati Everybody's scooping up cars from here. And that's very cool. And you get it right from Michigan, so you feel like it's Mopar capital of the world. Just, you, you feel a little bit more car guy when you're in Detroit. But the nice bucket seats, I mean, we're talking, this is a nice, I don't want to say departure for, for Corvettes because they've made a bunch of nice cars. But I mean, this is, you throw a Ferrari badge on this, people start losing their marbles. So uh, I dare I say this is probably the most excited I've been about a car in a long time. And I've got to do a road trip now for a little over 600 miles, which is good because there's a rental on it in the next 48 hours but uh, I've got it's only got nine miles on it see nine and it needs to hit 500 just to open up the uh, odometer a lot of people ask are the cars ever regulated or, or do we limit them in any way shape or form we don't but this car limits itself for the break-in period and uh, I've got to get 500 miles on it before I can give it to a customer anyway so it's gonna be a fun road trip little hands off because it's a solo road trip to social distance myself but if you're going to social distance yourself you probably want to do so in one of these all right let's get on the road and get this thing started all right i just left the dealership now i can start uh picking this guy apart and honestly i'm not going to start picking the car apart until i get back and having a uh, a road trip of a little over 600 miles allows me to get very familiar with the car, play around with it, obviously get the break-in period done. Honestly, just driving it out of the dealership very casually, it's really, it lives up to the Corvette reputation of being an everyday supercar, if that makes sense. Like, you can literally drive this. It's as comfortable as any, any other sports car or any other, um, even sedan, that you would drive. It's got good visibility. Uh, it's got good ergonomics. I didn't even start diving into the buttons. I didn't have them explain anything because I got a long drive. But it says, and it started at 318 miles to, to empty as the range for the tank down there. Um, and I'm already at 324. So it'll be interesting, especially with me driving it for a minute, 
to see what sort of range this first tank of gas actually gets. And I'm excited. I, I, I really, this is, as I said, this is an exciting car for me. I'm going to try not to get a ticket on the way back, but I do drive over the speed limit generally. So wish me luck, and I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Here we are, first tank of gas. Initial impressions, got almost 400 miles on it. And I like it. It's very docile. Again, still haven't opened it up. Uh, I was sort of curious if the roads allow. I want to see how fast I'm able to go. I'm a snacker. I'm sorry. I got the snacks and peanuts and caramels and all that. Um, I want to see how fast it'll go under uh, temporary. So uh, I just took let's see, 397 on it. And we just took... Hold on, $47, uh, 17 gallons. And I didn't pull over until it had the, uh, the emergency light on, uh, and then it gave me low range. But uh, now it gives me a range of 478 miles, which is actually pretty close. Uh, I, I'm driving through Pennsylvania, so the roads are pretty hilly and everything like that. But at a certain point in time, I was like, wow, if I wasn't, sort of playing with the throttle a little bit, I bet you you can stretch this tank to over 500 miles, which is pretty good for a road trip. But uh, initial, initial impressions, and I'm gonna go through the car more in detail when I get back and have the other one. Um, this, if you're driving with your hands at nine and three, like I like to, if you're up here, it's a little easier to reach, but this stalk, these two stalks here, are a little bit more difficult uh, for me and my normal size hands to reach. Uh, and this is just me being nitpicky. I like the look. I like the feel. Uh, the radio is good. I mean, it's really not much not to like about this car. And just, it feel, it's very driver focused, obviously. The passenger, you sort of, you're in your own little world over here. But I'm feeling it. Uh, people are checking it out. People are down with this. But it could just be because it's a new car. But I think it's got a lot of the benefits of the higher end exotics. You have to remove the the thought that this is going to be like a, a the, the panacea of sports cars. No, it's definitely a great value, but you can't expect it to accelerate like a LaFerrari or something like that. It's, it, for a Corvette, I'm very impressed. Uh, I like the way it handles. I think it sits a little high. Uh, these are all things that the aftermarket will take care of. And also the Z06 and the Z01 variants will address as well. But so far, absolutely worth every penny. Um, trying to think of reasons that you shouldn't spend 75 grand on it but it's it's pretty good so uh, i'll dig into it a little bit more when i get back i've got another 300 miles to go uh so i'll probably be through most of this tank of gas tomorrow morning i'll get both of these cars together and show you what they both look like uh, if anything magical happens if i get a ticket or anything like that i'll hit the cameras if not i'll see you at the shop here's a little nighttime love I don't know if you can see the uh, heads up display. There it is. Um, you get that right in your field of view, where you get this nice display, which you can toggle between that and the performance one. I've just been doing the regular one. But you'll also notice that we're at 497 miles. So within that 498, so in the next minute and a half, we're gonna have like rage mode, so to speak, with the uh, dash. They're gonna unlock the rest of the car and get to use the whole thing. The cockpit in here glows really nicely. Like again, this is all very, very focused on the driver. And all the controls are easy, the, the knobs. I don't like the... Um, the volume button on here because the volume button doesn't make it uh, if you hold it down it doesn't get loud enough quick enough so the adjustments are a little bit off but here we go it's, uh, we're kicking on 499 I wonder if you can like accelerate your way through it right like like it's gonna open up while you're raging Come on, Dash. Give 
give me the rest. Unlock the level. There's 500. Give it to me. All right, you're making me wait. You're making me look bad, car. There we go. Now we have, it's right in the middle of a turn. But now we have full car. And we get to kick it. And it's starting to rain. Nice. Well, see you at the shop. There's your little nighttime nighttime video. Legitimately started to rain the very second I hit 500 miles and unlocked the entire tachometer. Awesome. We're back. I got it cleaned up already. Took the top off. And it's next to its fellow. Hello. But if you look at this car, it's looking good. It, this car, honestly, fits in with cars like this and that. And that's amazing. I've always said it'd be cool if you could make a car that looks like an exotic car and performs like an exotic car, but is not the cost of an exotic car. And I think that's what we're looking at right here. Give you a quick peek into the, the top off is awesome. I mean, I get there's gonna be a convertible version, but the T-top is, is solid where I come from. The use of Corvette logos and the finish, like this is all, this is both nice and it's gonna last for a while, which is cool. Um, you have your cell phone holder here, my toll receipts, cup holders, both sets of keys. Uh, very, very useful controls, and it's all pretty easy. Those are heated seats. It's got a heated steering wheel. I mean, this is a, a full-use sports car. Um, and I guess that's heated and air-conditioned seat, heated and air-conditioned seat down there. You've got not so much visibility back there. But if you look, let's pop these. Let's pop the front and the rear. The top stows away neatly. Now you run into a situation that the top uses up your trunk space. So you really can't use a lot back here. Um, I don't know what the parts cost is here, but this clamshell is probably not the, uh, the cheapest. But again, it's Corvette. It's always gonna be Corvette. So you're looking at mid-engine, which is, I mean, I'm just trying to think from a perspective of an individual, if you're gonna work on this yourself, what you're gonna do. And, and now I'm looking at like the mod ability. Now, I'll, I'll admit this car needs an exhaust. Um, so if any exhaust company out there, it's a rental car, it's the one thing that I'll modify in a rental car is the exhaust. Uh, because I understand that the difference between the exhaust can make the, the experience change significantly. That car is very loud, very cool. This car, it's pretty quiet, and with the engine behind it, leaves a little bit to the imagination, uh, exhaust-wise. Now you've got lots of cooling in the front here. These giant, I mean, they, between this and like the ZL1s and everything like that, they've got lots of cooling integrated in the front. And even these big side scoops, functional. Uh, can pull a lot of air into this car for cooling. But when you start doing your um, turbos and whatnot, or even a supercharger, there is room on top for like a Magnuson blower. That's probably going to happen pretty soon. Uh, so they'll put a Roots blower on it. There's the turbos. I'm trying to see how much room is in here for turbos. I guess when you get rid of the valved exhaust and, the, and everything else. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely stuff some turbos in here. But turbos generate a lot of heat. And that heat has to go somewhere. So after 500 miles, I can tell you it needs a little bit of everything. Uh, it needs a little arrow, needs to come down a little bit, needs to, the, the ride has to be a little tightened up. I mean, all the stuff that they're gonna ultimately do with the, uh, the Z06, the R1, it needs. Um, but everybody's gotta remember, you can't approach this as like, this isn't the La Ferrari of, of Corvettes. This is the entry-level Corvette. This is the 04 Gallardo. This is the the very first iteration of this platform. And I think they 
I'd be happy with this car. I mean, honestly, they, they slammed it out of the park. Um, and you're looking at not really much needed in order to make this car work. I mean, I, I haven't, obviously, I haven't really uh, greased the brakes to the point where I can see uh, failure or not. But um, ultimately, and I'm trying not to show you the, the white car I got too. I'll save that for another video. But um, here's the trunk. Um, that one came from Pennsylvania. Uh, so there's not a tremendous amount of space up here, but now you have two trunks. You have the frunk in the front and you have the, uh, the trunk in the back. So you got twice the cargo capacity. Uh, and if you compare it with the cargo space on say the Z06 convertible, uh, I think you're in much better shape with the C8. I just think it looks cool opening up like that. It just, it's got the, the show factor. Now, if you compare the trunk space, now this this will free up a little bit. You still get the golf clubs in there. It's a, a Corvette staple. But now you have that and you have the extra space in the front. But uh, after 600 miles, I am an absolute fan. Uh, I think everybody else should be too. You really have to search for things not to like about this car. If you objectively look at it as a $70,000 car, even a $60,000 car with some options, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anything else that you would take in this price category as far as a new car goes compared to this. And that they discontinued production because of the coronavirus, et cetera, et cetera. I think this car, having one of these cars now, you're looking pretty good for a while. The, the only downside to these cars is that it's such a good car and a lot of people are going to realize that and a lot of people are going to buy them is that you're not going to have the exclusivity of say ferrari or uh, some of the lesser produced cars so you're going to end up seeing five of these on one block and not to that extent but it is still a corvette so that's the problem the corvette's going to have is volume but other than that big thumbs up from this guy rob ferretti thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Stay safe out there. So you guys are familiar with my other company, Adventure Drives, right? Well, this year we've got two trips coming up. One which is starting in Seattle and ending in Jackson Hole in July. That's going up through the Canadian Rockies, coming down through Banff, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, and Grand Teton National Park. It's going to be phenomenal. Also, we're going to be going to Scotland in October. We're going to be doing Scotch distilleries, playing golf at St. Andrews if you want to do that, walking around, seeing lakes, waterfalls, driving the North Coast. It's going to be an amazing trip. Prices start as low as $2,500 per person for the shorter trip in Scotland, about double that for the longer trip in July. If you're interested in going, check out the link in the description.